Um, I just want to start off by saying this is um, this is a, 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 a tough day, but also a special day. It's one of those that um, we look for the future of our program and understand what the horizon and what opportunities exist for us and what we see this program can can and should be about. Um, but we're also it, it's also a, a tough day because um, to come to this decision was a, a, a challenging conversations between coach and I and um, he's he's really done a lot to try to help this program and understood where he wanted to see it go so um, really appreciative of coach Weir his and and want to wish he Alma and the whole family all the best um, as we go through this one of the things that wanted to put out because this is not a press conference I want I want to be able to answer questions you guys already know where we are and what's happening um, he will be completing the, the, the season with the team as the coach. That is something that he and I had communicated about. He felt it was a good opportunity to have this conversations that we did to allow us to get to this point so that he can focus on after this, just on the remaining of the year and just coach the team, knowing already what the situation is and where we are. Um, so it, it's, I'm again, extremely appreciative of, of Paul. Um, and being able to get to this point together, understanding where we both see this program and where it needs to be. And we look forward to this process and, and finding a coach that's going to really uh, give us the opportunity to take those steps forward that we all see here. So with that, I'll open it up. I'd be happy to answer questions and um, go for it, Jeff. So the, the buyout, obviously, uh, contractually, it's supposed to be 350 for the next two years, 700,000. Um, can you tell us, A, what the buyout is, um, how you guys got to that number, and also the retention bonus, the addendum to his contract, in which UNM paid $50,000 a year in lieu of the original retention bonus, you guys were paying directly to NMSU. How does that go? Um, the payment structure, the payment scale that NMSU released in 2000. I believe 18 says that he still owes $275,000 for his buyout at NMSU. How much is UNM still on the hook for there? So total buyout that you guys owe Paul. I got you. You guys still owe NMSU. I got you. So a lot of, a lot of different pieces to that, but all great questions. Um, so Jeff, the, to, to start off where, yes, you're correct. His, his buyout as contractually obligated on the contract would have been 350. 350 for the remaining years on this contract would have been 350, 350 for a total 700. If, if those that are aware, um, so when he is after his first year here, we did an addendum to the contract that basically his retention bonus was basically paid directly to New Mexico State because that's what he used. That was the intention. Um, we've done so. So basically, it's us just passing instead of instead of the money going to him, it goes straight to New Mexico State. That was really our responsibility in regards to that addendum um it's it's still it's not us being responsible for his bot it's us basically redirecting uh revenue that he was receiving straight to them now the the decision ultimately after many conversations was we wanted to find a way for him to 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 move forward be able to do what he wanted what he was hoping to do is to be able to finish up this year coach the team and after many conversations, the decision that we've agreed upon, which is first year will be, which would be actually paid by next fiscal year. So it'll be January of 2022, will be 245,000. And then the following calendar year or fiscal year, January of 23, it'll be 245,000. That is what we are responsible for as part of this guarantee uh, or this uh, agreement, excuse me. Part, I apologize there. The NMSU part for this year that we were, that that was already, in, we are going to fulfill that. So the 50,000 that um, for this calendar year, we will be paid to New Mexico State directly um, as part of, as part of the, the this, this agreement. And then we've also uh, agreed to pass along another, uh, an additional 50,000 for next year, next calendar year. So uh, with that being said, those two, the last, the New Mexico State's number that I just mentioned are fiscally um, in our budget. It is something we have budgeted already and have those in place. So that's not, that's not any new money. 
um, the 245 and the 245 are what actually uh, going to Coach Weir. The other aspect of it is I know the question is going to be asked, where's this money coming from? So let's just address it right now. Um, we have worked with uh, and, and secured uh, all the money necessary through private funds to be able to address this as we go through this process. So um, no new, no, no state money, no new money will be used for the 245 as far as through our, our state or our, our, our budget. So that, that was an important task. I think you guys and many of you remember when I did it with football, same thing. Biggest way to get to where we were going to get to is I wanted to make sure that we're not putting any additional burden on this department in regards to um, our current budget situation and what it is. It's a challenge, you know. But I also we also understand that there's for us to continue to grow our budget, this is one of these areas that, that we, did, we definitely need to continue to, to put in the right perspective. So um, I think that answers your question, Jeff, hopefully. It, it does, but I want to I want to do one follow because you just mentioned the private funding. I'm I'm curious how how that went about. Did you approach people and ask them? Did people come to you? No, Jeff. I'm gonna, establishing... Jeff, I'm just going to leave it as we we had some conversations with individuals that had presented, um, had offered the opportunity to help if necessary, uh, if it ever got to this point. Because they also so again, it was for the right these individuals that uh, that this that helped get to this point. I've also felt it was in the benefit to help the program and help Coach Weir and understood that what we were trying to do and trying to do for the right reason. So um, how we got there is irrelevant. It's more so the opportunity that, that they're, they're providing us to allow this opportunity to move forward. Isabel, you're up. Um, is UNM hiring a search firm? Great question, Isabel. Um, so it's a little different. You remember... If you remember when we did the football one, I said that it was something I was strongly going to consider just because of the aspect and everything else that of what we're doing. You know, I, I this uh, this is one of the areas in, in my past that I that I, I'm going to use to to our benefit here. Having a basketball background, having a, been a, a former coach in Division One, I, um, I have a lot of resources that I can utilize and already have um, if necessary. The big thing that we're going to focus on. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a lot of individuals in this department that have a basketball background as well. So I, from my standpoint, as I go through this process, like I said before, it's going to be a very tight process. It's not going to be many individuals involved. If I do have to go with a search firm or a consultant to assist with the process, it's more on the administrative side and the background checks of individuals and because of the timing where we currently stand. So at this point, I don't anticipate going and hiring a full search, um, but it is something that we, I, I have not made a decision right now, but we will over the next several days. Okay, uh, Van Tate, you're up. Yeah, Eddie, um, I know you guys mutually agreed to this. Uh, coming to that mutual agreement, did you guys talk about this being a year of COVID and, and and with all of those factors and stuff like that, did, did you all both decide it was, it was fair and that you didn't want to go and wait another year? Can you talk about that? Well, first of all, you know, the, the, the decision where we are today isn't revolving around COVID or around wins and losses. I think it's a culmination of everything that, that you do. And I've said this before, when we evaluate a coach or a program, it's, it's the, the full body of work. And so COVID, COVID has been challenging for all of us. And, and it's no different for men's basketball, for women's basketball, for the student athletes that participate in those, the football players. Um, I understood those challenges. The conversations that we had were more about where we were, where we saw the program going. And it was, it was just com candid conversations between he and I, um, kind of just seeing where we were, what we needed to happen. It's not about the wins and losses. I understood, and I said this before, it, it, this year I'm not hanging my hat on a bunch of wins and losses, as much as we all want to win. We all do, but I also had to put, I, I'm, I, I'm not naive to sit here and say that the challenges that they went through were not challenging. So um, everybody's going through different challenges. They're no different. Um, so as I approach this, one of the things for me was looking again, what's the body of work? Where are we trying to go? And, and honestly, how much does this, has this, this challenge really laid upon him and others? And I think that that go when you start putting all that into perspective, and you have 
real candid and honest conversations, we get, you know, that, that allowed us to get to where we were today. And what about the uh, timeline? Have you given yourself a timeline as far as when you would like to see a coach hired just, you know, <laughs> based on recruiting and different things like that? Yeah, you know, I, I'm, uh, uh, again, we want to do this as fast as we can, but we're not going to do it fast just because we're going to do it right. And, and that is one of the things that I am going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do my due diligence. I'm going to talk to people, uh, but I'm not doing this just for fast. Of course, we'd all love this to be done tomorrow and have another, but we have a season right now. The focus is let's let those kids finish up this year. I know it wasn't ideal, um, but it, it was a, a decision to do it now because it allows Paul to just go ahead and finish up this year with those kids, let them have fun, let them finish up the year. Um, th this search will go on. What I ask for our fans and I ask of all of you as well is be respectful for those young men that are out there. You know, they, they don't, they, they, this wasn't something they, they have asked for. This is something that honestly they want to go out there and compete and still represent the Lobos the way they have. So give them that respect, give coach that respect. Um, I know he's going to, you guys are going to ask if he's going to speak at some point. He will. I, I think right now his whole thing is like, I just want to focus on the kids and have fun and, and, and get this. So, uh, give him that respect, I, I, I ask. Um, but honestly, for me, it's about doing this right and making sure that that we, we get the right coach here. And you know, look, I, I guess I'll say it right now, since many of you might ask this question. So if you are and if you're one of the next ones and you're going to ask, I apologize. But what I'm looking for here, what we are looking for here, excuse me, is going to be the same, first and foremost, the same thing I said for football. The, my first number one point, and that's in any coach and any administrator that I have here, it's character and integrity. If I if a coach doesn't have the character and integrity that I need here, I'm not I'm not interested. I, I don't care what your past, how many games you won. If you are if you don't have the character, you don't have the integrity that I believe is necessary for this university because this position is bigger than than me. It's bigger than this. It's somebody who's going to help, hopefully, build the, the where we all expect of Lobo basketball. So that's important. Second. Player development. Can they develop players on and off the court and in life? Those are, it, it's, it's, we're all going through major challenges right now with COVID. It's going to need somebody who can not just help them get better basketball wise, but basically help them prepare as individuals. I'm not saying that hasn't happened. What I'm saying, that is what I'm looking for. Third, it's going to be, um, and this is a little different now because I've, I've, and I've said this, it was one of mine for football. It was cultural fit. UNM is unique. And I've, and I've learned every day that I've here how unique UNM is. Danny has shown those things. I'm not going and hiring somebody just because they've been here. I'm not going to hire somebody because they had, because they played here. And I know those are going to be people. And I'm going to have an opportunity to sit down with many of them. The, the, the fact is, are, do they understand the expectations, how to communicate, the, the pressure that this job can be? So all those different factors are important. So cultural fit is going to be important to me. Um, community investment, that kind of goes hand in hand. Community investment, they're going to have to invest in this community as much as they're going to be a coach. If they surround themselves with great assistance and everything else, I do believe this could, it, it could be a win-win situation. And then lastly, again, for me, it, it's, this is a little small one, um, but it's, it's very, very important. You know, you can talk about what kind of offense they're going to run, defense, what kind of – that's all, that's all good. That's all, and, and we'll get to that. But who are their mentors? Who are their advisors? Who are their people that they reach out to? Because it's important in life to know that we all need people that we can re rely on. But it also helps. Honestly, it helps more and more the ability of them being able to, to have somebody to lean on. I mean, Danny's a great example. And I use Danny. I, you know, he, he had – not just that he had someone like Rocky Long. I mean, you look at the people that he was around, helped him navigate this crazy year. I mean, he told you, if it wasn't for Arizona State, that wouldn't be an opportunity. So I've gone a little further than I want to. I apologize, but I just wanted to give you guys and ladies a full insight of kind of what's going to be the criteria when I look into individuals. Mark Smith, you're up. You're muted, too. You're also muted. Okay, Eddie, Eddie just dismantled my entire question, which was the criteria. I, I, I told you, I apologize if I did, man. I just figured it, you guys were going to ask. 
Yeah, I, uh, so I'm going to rephrase it since I got the floor here a little bit, but a uh, couple of other things uh, with that. With the football search, you said that uh, you would not answer comment or no comment with specific names. Will that be the same? Because uh, like Coach K called me today, said he's ready to leave, but that doesn't matter at this no, point. No, okay. I, you know, I, I, I appreciate you asking that, Mark. You know, the, the reality is I'm not going to comment on who's called me because my phone has been blown up like probably you guys is, is it. And people reaching out to you saying, hey, can look, if you don't hear from me out of my mouth that this is somebody who's a viable candidate, don't believe it. I, I, I am going to speak to a lot of individuals through this process because I feel it's important. But speaking to them doesn't mean that I'm interviewing them. It's really trying to find out a little bit about the ins and outs. So, um if you hear the, if you hear whatever rumors you hear, uh, you know, again, people are throwing out their names because they want to help themselves personally. There's people that are going to be that, that I, I can, I can assure you that I will not be interested that will have their name out there just because. So unless you hear from me, um, know that it's probably not, not the truth to it, but yes, okay. sir, go ahead. And then how do you, um, will you give us updates periodically or uh, I mean, if we just ask you a name, at any time, is it going to be a no comment either way at this point, or how how would you would you depending, say? That depending on how the search goes, Mark. Depending on how the search goes, you know, I, I I would rather try to give you guys an update as the process goes. But if it goes as I hope it does, and it goes smoothly, and we can get through this process fairly quickly, I definitely rather get the process done then have an update if for some reason, and, and it might happen this way, I've thought about it and I actually met with, with my staff or some others about this earlier. If we get to a point because of where we are in the season, we still have the conference tournament and others might be still competing, that this might take an extra couple of days, this and that, then, and it, it deems that I have to come on and have a conversation, by all means, I'll be happy to do so. And, and finally, is there a, a total financial figure that, you're working with no not at this point i mean i think we're, we will start off where we are currently and assess it one of the things that we're going to do is we've got financial challenges that are that are that we all know about i'm not i'm not shying away from that um but we also have to figure out where the market value is where we are and where we plan to be it you know i want to get creative i want to get creative when it comes to contracts i want to get creative when it comes to opportunities it, it might be something that's a little bit more backloaded um, but it's still going to have expectations. So it's not going to be something that's just going to be fairly received. Those are things that we're going to go through. We're going to try to figure them out. But from my perspective, we're going to start off where we are today and try to see where we can end up with whomever the candidates are. Uh, Lee Freya, you're up. Eddie, when uh, did you say to yourself, positively, this has to change? Was there uh, was there anything that you saw that, that just – you know, push the button that said, I got to do something here? Uh, that, again, great question. Um, you know, concerns, we all have concerns about different things. And, you know, when you look at our fan base, when you look at the arena, those are those are concerning factors. It has nothing to do with, with um, the student athletes we have here or anything else like that. I think when I, as I've gone through the last several years looking at our program, I knew the challenges we had. And Paul and I had, we sat down after the last couple of years and we've had candid conversations about where the program is, where we need it to go, what are the steps we're going to do to get there. And some have worked and some haven't. So as I've, I said, so as I've sat here, excuse me, um, and looked at everything, this is, it's about honestly looking at the whole body of the, the program where it is. Um, I, honestly, I, it, it was more so kind of where we were both together at the same time as far as talking about um, where the progress was going with the program, then actually a, you know, we've, you know, we've lost, or there's, there's a mad exodus of our fan base. It wasn't any of that. It was more so, again, assessing everything and after the conversations, kind of understanding that a change was necessary. Eddie, as far as um, uh, you gave us your criteria, but how important is it to you that this person uh, already have head coaching experience. Great point. Um, I can tell you right now, I, I am strongly leaning on individuals that have had head coaching experience or are currently head coaches. 
because for me, um, this is a challenging job. Not to, I'm not going to sit here today and say I'm not going to ever hire an assistant coach and because there or somebody who, who's currently an assistant but maybe was a head coach back in, you know, several years ago, whatever. I'm going to look at everybody. I'm going to give them the best opportunity to, to, to see if they, if they truly fit what we're looking for here. Um, but where the program is currently, what my expectations would be is probably look at more so individuals that are sitting head coaches. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, you know, put myself in a corner and say this is this is all I'm looking at. So um, it is kind of where I'm leaning, but it's not what's what's driving the the, the, the actual search. Uh, Will, you're up. Uh, Eddie, I'm gonna have a follow up to this too. But um, is there an inherent risk with extending a coach? After one good year, look, Paul came in, had the first year where he succeeded beyond expectations, and then he, he gets extended. Is there a risk by doing that? Because then you run into the problem of having to let the guy go with, you know, the yeah. four-letter word that is the buyout. Well, well, I don't – He what we didn't extend him is after his first year. He, he The yeah. addendum that we did was honestly more so something he approached us about to, to just redirect some of the stuff that was already in his contract. That was um, so. We we did not extend it, but in general, I would say in general, um, I think you have to understand the bigger picture. And and just to say, if you, if we're, I'm going to speak for myself only here. I guess it's because I, I know every AD is different, every individual is different. Um, based off wins and losses, that's not what I'm I'm, I'm making a, a a contract extension or a contract change or anything else. You can't just do that. So for me, if a coach has a one good year, especially in the first year, um, that's not that's not being honest with the program, with the department, with him or her. If it's any other sport, I mean. So from my perspective, to make those decisions, from my, it's going to be a lot more than that. And um, need to understand where the program's going, how that's being developed, what are the other intangibles. Um, I'm never going to sit here and say that I would not extend somebody after the first year, but it's not going to be solely on wins and losses. Uh, and then getting back to the buyout, uh, $500,000 is no small amount. So I'm curious if you can just carry through. Well, they four ninety. It's no small amount. It's not like you can just pick up the phone or text somebody and say, Hey, can you give me half a million dollars or 490,000? So I'm just curious how that time frame works. Was it through a group of boosters that they approached you? Was it a discussion you had at a meeting? Or what what happened there? Yeah, well, I, th I think we're getting I, I think we're getting into the weeds here. It's not things. One of the things I pride myself on is having relationships with our with with our, our supporters, our donors, and and you know what? That's that's really I me communicating with donors happens almost on a daily basis, and it's not because I'm asking them for money or asking them. We just finished our our, our give day last week. I mean, I called dozens upon dozens of our donors prior to the to it to help us support our student athletes. So the relationships that I have, I feel like we built and they're good ones. They understand what we're trying to do here. It's not about a coach. It's not about a buyout. It's not it's it's about what's in the best interest for the program. And I think many of those who who have come to the table for other things, not just this, they understand what they're doing and why they're doing it for. They're doing it not just to help the program continue to be either great or can help the program get to where it needs to be. So um, those conversations, I mean, again, I, I have conversations with donors every, almost every day. If not, heck, I called, I think, all 400 of the ones who donated are I'm almost there, uh, the ones who donated on Lobo Day, because I want to thank them. So it's, it's basically having a relationship. So it wasn't a, hey, I'm bringing in five, 10 people, 15 people to a room and say, okay, you got to give me now. That, that's not how it works. All right. Let's see the Eddie, uh, two things. One, just the sensitivity obviously was a sensitive conversation. And I, I know typically you like to evaluate these at the end of the season. Just how you got here now, it's being termed as a mutual agreement. And as much as you feel comfortable in, in regards to the conversation with Paul, how that went and how you got here now. And I, I do have one other question after that. Sure. So um, first of all, Paul, Paul still had us really felt that he can try to do things here and make it where we needed to. So he, he just didn't come in here and say, I'm done. 
that's not how it got to where we are today. It, I mean, he really felt um, that there were things that he can do to put a, put this program where we all expected to be next year. But the more we communicated, the more we had those conversations and being honest with each other and just seeing, hey, look, this is where it is. This is where the program is. What are the positives? What are the negatives? Everything else. I think, that, you know, again, that led us to where we were. So it wasn't, uh, first of all, Paul's got a lot of pride and a lot of hope and d desire and vision as far as where he thought he can put this program. But when we, you sit down and you start evaluating everything he's saying, where, we, where are we and can we get there? You know, ultimately, that's how we got to the decision. So it wasn't um, that he came and said, I quit. That's by all means. Paul has been adamant that that he wanted to try to stay here through the duration and hopefully get this thing where he saw it can be from day one. So um, I just like I said, I appreciate him. I think he understood my concerns, my, and my, you know, candidly, just where we were and, and where we needed to go. Secondly, and you alluded to this briefly. I know your phone's been ringing. I, my, I believe this, and I believe the majority of my esteemed colleagues on this call believe this, that this is a very desirable job. Absolutely. But there, there's, this, there's this hum amongst Lobo fans, this, this where are we now? And, and, and to, for you, maybe just to assure Lobo fans, I believe that <laughs> there's a lot of very, very, A, big names and big, highly qualified coaches. I, I, I believe, and I, I think you believe uh, yeah. that I'm, I'm asking you, uh, is, is this still a very, very much desired position in college basketball? You know, you heard me again. I go back to the football one just because of the timing, and it just wasn't that long ago. I mean, it seems much longer with COVID, but um, just with with football, we had such an enormous amount of interest, and I try to express that in the press conferences prior and after of. People look at football and said, well, they only won X number of games prior to and this and that, and you got all these financial challenges. This is a very attractive job. This is a flagship institution of a Mountain West school who has shown it can win championships at every level. And so the fact is, in football, there was an unbelievable amount of interest by some very high-profile coaches. And I can just assure you now that basketball's there or, or even more because of the history and the tradition. And so um, what our fan base needs to, to kind of remind themselves is UNM has had success. And, it, and just because of this recent or the financial challenges or whatever they want to say are, are concerns of why we can't be a great program again or we shouldn't be as sexy or as uh, interesting, there's – it. I, I tell them as candidly as I could tell them. This is an unbelievable opportunity, and there's more people that are going to be reaching out for this job than many others um, that are not just open now that will that will be open. So I'm excited because, honestly, I know the, the kind of caliber coaches we can have here. Now the question is, do they fit what we're looking for? Mr. Grammer. Hey, Eddie, one, one's a quick uh, kind of follow-up to the to the buyout, and that's the mitigation part. You may have already said it, but if he does coach again, does does that mitigate in any way? And is this paid over two years? It's it's the, it, we decided because of the agreement and the reduction of the the, the dollars and everything else that we were not going to mitigate this. Um, I do not know what Paul's immediate or future kind of aspirations are we, we did not have that conversation as far then I think at some point he'll have that conversation with everyone and kind of let them know where he's going um, but from there's no mitigation associated with this and it is the, the it, it is to be paid as it's spelled out in, in the agreement to be paid January of 22 and January of 23 so um, nothing this year besides the 50,000 that we already have in our budget so nothing Nothing additional on this calendar year or fiscal year. Everything else will be next year and the following year. And those already, as I said, um, we feel confident that um, where the finances are currently. And five of his six staff members, or, or four or five maybe it is, um, are up at the end of this year. No plans for early departure there. I mean, all of them will be paid through the end of this year. The guy who has a two-year contract, however – um, would you guys buy him out if the next coach wants to, or would you guys obligate him to stay on the staff? You know, all our coaches will have an opportunity. They'll, they'll still be expected to be our assistant coaches um, or our coaches after the season is com completed and fulfill their, their contract obligations. If at any point 
they are pursuing other opportunities. We will have conversations with them before the time before uh, the new coach is hired and brought in. Once the new coach is brought in, he's he's going to have an opportunity to sit down with everyone on staff and find out if that's something they want to pursue further. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I, I'm I, I, we will work with every coach and give them an opportunity. But to sit here and say that I, I'm going to have a coach a new coach say that they have to have somebody on their staff be, just because that, that we won't do. So uh, we will work with our coaches. Um, hopefully get, they will have, they will, uh, they will be given an opportunity to meet with our new coach when the time comes, if they deem to look at another opportunity, we will work with them if with those parameters, if they're at the end of their contracts and they'll, they'll move on. If they're not, then we'll, we'll sit down and have those conversations just like we do with everything else. Well, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Grace reader, Grace, you're up. Thank you. Um, so Jeff touched on this a little bit with the caliber of folks that you can bring in. Talk a little bit about, you said, um, you know, you've been very candid with budget shortfalls. You use the word creative when it comes to how you make craft this contract moving forward. Um, aside from just dollar amounts and budget, what other, you know, functions and strategies are you using to bring in a high caliber level of coach here? Uh, Grace, great question. Again, this is, um, I think, I think the high caliber coach that is going to be not just interested, but some that we will reach out to or pursue. Um, I, I believe they're going to, well, I know they're going to have everything that that's currently going on with the program. So financially, everything else, I'm not sugarcoating anything. I'm not hiding from it. I'm telling them what it is from day one. So they understand where we are and where we can go though. We all know this because we've seen the, the pit packed 14,000 strong or more. If we get the programs in that position, opportunities really start expanding. Now, just because of that doesn't mean we, we invest everything solely back into football. There's going to be other hurdles, other challenges. If it wasn't for COVID, I'm, I, you've heard me say this before, you know, it would have been a third year we would have made our budget. Um, I truly believe it. This year is, is an anomaly. We have one of the, we have we're 75% self-generated revenue. Unlike any other Mountain West team, unlike any many, if not all, group of fives. So our debt, I mean, our deficit that we're looking at potentially is larger than many others. And it's because we're so dependent on ticket sales and everything else. What, what we're trying to do right now is trying to kind of balance that out a little bit more with the university, with others, and trying to see where we can find ways to, to, to help, help the situation out. But again, uh, the big part of it, regardless of it, if it's 75, 65, whatever that number is, we have to get an opportunity to have individuals in the stands for basketball, football, and all sports. You know, this today we have a great opportunity across the street. We're going to have a baseball game. It's basically sold out. I think it's close to being sold out if it wasn't um, with what we're allowed to have in there. So that's the start of getting us where we need to be. But when it comes to basketball, it's going to be getting creative, looking at opportunities, looking at scheduling, looking at um, how our budgets compare to others within the league and um, see where we can tweak some things and make it right. Eddie, um, perhaps this falls under the uh, player development portion of what you're looking for in, in your next coach. Uh, but how important is it that that coach has a proven recruiting pipeline that you can point to and see successful players in this person's path and I wonder how much emphasis you'll place on home state talent. Is that something that you're looking to improve on? Yeah, you know, I, I think football has shown that there is some there, – there, we have to do our part and take care of our, our – first of all, our backyard. We've got, we've got to go through our state and, and figure out um, those individuals that we feel and they feel that, that we're, we're to, to, to have an opportunity to be a Lobo. Because I, I know one thing, and I think we've all seen it in many, many different levels at whatever sport you look at, uh, in-state talent usually works harder and has a lot more pride about that institution. Um, it's not always, but not more, more than likely it is that way. So having some individuals from the state of New Mexico, I think is very important. But that's something that the coach is going to have to determine. They're going to have to work out. They're going to have to build relationships with high school coaches and programs. Um, I think it's important, though, to answer your question about the um, – pipeline and recruiting, I think it's important for them to have a connection with the world of recruiting, basketball recruiting, and how unique it is. Um, but it's also their part to hire assistant coaches that are 
that have the integrity, that have the ability to be able to get into these inroads and make the opportunity to bring some of these talented young men here. Um, so I don't, I, 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 it's important, but it's not, it's not a high priority to be uh, a top recruiter. It's I want a great, I want a very great, you know, as good a recruiter as anybody else, but I also want them to develop the student athletes because I've seen coaches that are out there that don't are not getting the five stars, but they're getting the three and the four stars. And when they leave, they're all Americans or they're, they're developing. I mean, I'll give you a great example. And I just say it because of what I know, what kind of person he is and how he develops, you know, an Anthony Grant of the world. And I'm not, I'm not hiring Anthony Grant. So let's just go ahead. And uh, he's got an unbelievable job. He's one of my, my mentors and uh, almost a second father to me in many ways, but how he develops student athletes. I mean, if you look at the young man who left last year, I'll be top, you know, he developed what he developed. And I think it's important for people to know that it's not just about getting five stars. It's about how they continue to grow on the program. So that's why it's important. And then grow again, grow individually as a person, which is important because they come back and many of these end up living here in our community and being role models. So that's, that's important to me. Will? Eddie, uh, attendance at men's basketball games at an all-time low for the pit. And I'm curious, can you even hire a coach who can inspire fans to come back? And how, like, how do you fix that? Do you need to make a splash with the next coach? Like kind of what Danny did when Danny came in, he kind of got people energized and talking about coming back to level football. Sure. Is that even possible with basketball? Oh, it's, it's not, it's not just possible. It's, 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 it's definitely do extremely doable. I think anybody you bring in here, regardless of the splash or anything else, I know firsthand they're going to generate interest. And so the question upon them will be, how do they, how do they embrace the community? How does the community embrace them? How do they, how does, how do, how do they start? What do they do on the court? They're not going to, we're not going to get enough. I mean, could I win the press conference by bringing a coach with a big name? Sure. That doesn't build stability. That doesn't build a, a program. And what we're trying to do is build, a, build the program here to where it needs to be for, for, for success, not just past one year. So I'm looking for, again, it goes back to, it's not about the splash. I think whomever we bring in, hey, Danny wasn't the most touted individual when we hired him. You know, there were more individuals out there that had better credentials because they had been head coaches or this or that. It's about the right person that understands what we're trying to do and how we need to do it. And, and that's important to me. So um, I, I think the coach that comes in here, we will do his part. But the other thing is we will too. Our, as a department, that's our responsibility. We got to get out there. We got to get individuals interested in doing what we got to do. But again, we've got COVID. We still got to kind of go through right now and make it happen. Now let's go Mark and then Jeff will have the last question. Grammar. Mark than grammar. He's got to figure out how to unmute himself. Keep you me there. Eddie, uh, how much of the uh, process is going to include guys uh, talking to you about, uh, about your commitments here? Uh, you look at what you came into. Um, you uh, you had to, you've had to replace a, a football coach and a basketball coach here in a in a short period of time. It's kind of the nature of the business right now that uh, coaches come in. They have a different athletic director in a few years. Uh, how much of that is part of the conversation, uh, and how concerned are you with guys uh, looking to uh, find out? your commitment to how long you're going to be here and do you do you have answers for that i uh, again great question and I, and I appreciate you asking that question because you know this is one of those questions that that's asked and it's asked quite a bit people say well you're he's never going to be here he's not going to be here danny and i had a very candid conversation when when we went through that process he asked me look man i know you're going to be up what i'm trying to find here is a coach that that's going to be here for the program not for me you know, it, it's it's bigger than Eddie Nunez. It's bigger than everybody else in this department. I need somebody who's going to embrace the culture, embrace the coaches, the other coaches on the staff, the community. And so for me, I tell them firsthand is, look, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. Heck, they could fire me tomorrow. And, I mean, it's out of my control if I'm going to be here or not. I know that there's going to be interest. And have there has, has there been interest? Yeah, candidly, there has. And 
I'm, I'm very honest with my coaches and my staff at any point, if anything happens and I get to a point like that, then I'm going to be honest with them and let them know where this situation stands and where it is with me. But any coach coming in, I, I am going to tell them the same thing. I am planning on being here as long as the university wants me to be here. And as long as we're, we're having an opportunity to continue to be great, continue to compete for championships, academically do what we're doing. If we're doing all those things, and this is an unbelievable place to be. So I'm committed to, to, to UNM. I'm committed to being in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But I'm also going to not sit here and say that I'll never look at something or, I mean, because, again, as quick as I can look at something, somebody also could fire me tomorrow. So it's about finding the right person for UNM, point blank. I'm not, I'm not here for me. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to get something to add to my resume. Again, it's, it's about who – can bring this program to the, to compete for championships, not just win. We've all said this before. I want someone who win, win with class and integrity and everything else, but I want to win championships. We're not bringing you here just to win games. We, win, we need to win some championships. So that's important to me. Jeff, hang on one second. Let me let Van go, and then Jeff, you'll have the final question because we got to start wrapping this up. Am I, am I supposed to be scared about what Jeff's going to ask last or something here? I, I gave him the first question. We give him the last question. <laughs> All right, so, go ahead, Van. Sorry. You're on mute, Van. You're muted, Van. Van, you're on mute, man. I can't unmute you, so I wish I could help. There you go. Okay. Hey, hey Eddie, so when you talked about uh, um, somebody fitting the culture here, like how unique New Mexico is, does that – as somebody who has background here and stuff like that, does that make them a strong, strong candidate? Or, I mean, would they have like a little more favor because they, they've actually been around here? No, it doesn't. And I'm not trying to say it in a negative way. It's, it's part of the process. I take that into consideration just like I do with all these. I know how important it is, but it doesn't mean it's going to have more weight than something else. Um, when, when we went through the process with Danny, and I can, I'm referring to him because, again, how close this was. It, he wasn't the top candidate when he walked in. I knew he had a lot of, I had a lot of interest about him, but the fact was I didn't hire him just because he was from here. It's because of what he did when we sat across from each other and he sold me on his vision and, and what he was trying to do and how he was going to do it. So for my, from my standpoint, it's important to, to know that they have an understanding, but if they don't, Hey, I'm, I wasn't from here but I understand how important this is. It's going to, it, <laughs> I've been to a Matanza, I've been to some of these other places, you know, other things that, sh that you have to embrace the community and you have to, and they have to know that you're authentic about it, not just fake. And I think that's, that's important to know is when you sit down with somebody, you can see where they've been and how they've done things and how they treat people and all that stuff. That's going to be part of this process is learning how, how somebody can, can really understand what New Mexico is about and look at the future and say, this is not just a one one year situation. I don't want a coach that's going to come in here and just be here for a year. I mean, I want somebody who's going to see the future and see how we how great this can be. All right, Jeffrey Grammer, unmute yourself and bring it home. Eddie, I hate to do this, but since I'm the one that sits in the F and F meetings and the Regents meetings, I got one more financial question that. Go for it. I know you don't want to get into the who and, and all that on, on the private donors, but where, where is this going to show up in the budget? Does it come out of Lobo Club fundraising money? Does it is there a spot on the budget that we will see over the next two years this show up? And if not in the athletics budget, where where does this money reside on paper somewhere so, so it can be tracked? It's again, it's it's it will be tracked because as you'll see in the future, when those payments are set to be made, they will not affect our, our current budget. So you're not going to see it being pulled or anything else is going to be reduced for it. It's going to be, um, these again, these are our donors that have stepped up. They have, the, the funds are, are, gonna, are in place and we will transfer them accordingly as the time, as that expectation. These are, are, are given for the, pro, for the, the future of the program. So there's a lot of a lot of things we can, of course, use this for and do things with. So it's not just these individuals that stepped up did not just step up for this alone. They stepped up actually for bigger things, for the program. What do we need to do for the future? You know, we 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 established an endowment, you know, several months ago for the future for the future of the of the operations of basketball. So there's more things like that that are being done. 
I'm not saying that there's things that are being done that are people are reinvesting in their programs. Football is a great example. They're reinvesting into football, women's basketball. So um, these these funds that are being brought in are being are going to be re going to be put in as we've told the donors for what the purpose is. I'm not none of this is going to be used for anything else than what those donors understood that we will use it for. To, to wrap it up, then I'll promise this is just a follow up to that. Obviously, well, the endowment is, is part of that. Is, would the endowment be used for it? No, no, sir. No, it won't. Uh, and let me answer that quickly. It will not. I just use that as an example of the investment of our, our fan base, but no. And then the, the next part is, in, and this precedes you, I, I get it, but the history of buyouts here is that athletics hasn't actually paid the buyouts of their past coaches. Now, that may be different with Bob Davey. I realize that that's most recent. But in basketball, Craig Neal's million-dollar buyout was transferred over to the main campus and it was never announced by anyone in athletics. It was never announced. We, we found it at the journal a year after the fact and reported that somebody on main campus paid for it. So the tracking of these buyouts in, in an athletic department that has the history over the past decade that it has is something that I think the, the community should be able to follow. And that's right. why where, wherever the payments are coming from and where they reside on paper somewhere, if that can be tracked, I think that's a fair question to, to keep following you up on. You know, I agree. I think you guys all know me by now. I've what, what I'm gonna I'm gonna be a straight shooter with you guys. I'm gonna tell you where it is. I'm because I'm I've said it since day one. We're gonna be accountable for everything we do. So one of the things that I, I said as we've gone through both Coach Davies and this one was that we're gonna do this and we're not gonna put a burden on this university or our current budget or anything else that's gonna not allow us to grow and do things we need to do. So similar to that, the it will be it will be shown as payments to just like in our budget. You know, it's a it's a responsibility for the university because that's that's where his contract resides. But the money will be transferred over accordingly. So um, and so you're not gonna you're not gonna see re signing or just passing it on to the university. That is one of the things that I told President Stokes we would not do from the beginning when we had this started this conversation. And and if we were here today and it was a different conversation that um, or at the end of the year that we were parting ways with coach for a different reason, the same factor would be, and I cannot right now, because of the financial challenges we're in, I cannot ask the university to go above and beyond and do something that are, right now I can't, I can't see being done. Was, it, was that part of the, the sign off process? I mean, the, whether it be the regents or, or president Stokes, knowing that you were not going to be asking main campus for any of this money. It, it, it never was a conversation because I didn't let it be a conversation. I wanted to make sure from the beginning they understood this was what I, how I wanted to make it happen. I, I, I can't, again, we're, we're fighting for everything we're fighting for, and we've got to be honest and we've got to be realistic with everything. So um, for me to be able to do this, I need to know that we can do it the right way. And that, to me, this is the right way. I, I, I know there's times that we're going to have to have some aid from the university for other things. And, I, and you know what? When that time comes, then we'll cross that bridge. But to, th these are certain, you know, these are things that I want to make sure we can do together. Here.